As armed conflicts continue to impact the bare sustainability of human life, a critical but quiet victim of armed conflicts is in a desperate need of intention – the environment. Armed conflicts cause significant harm to the environment and communities that depend on natural resources. The environment is directly attacked or suffers incidental damage due to the use of certain weapons and tactics of war. It is also impacted by damage or destruction of the built environment, for example, when fighting disrupts water, sanitation or electricity services, or hinder the infrastructure that enables them to operate. At the same time, deadly landmine contamination may also contribute to climate risks, including pollution to the soil and water by introducing non-biodegradable and toxic waste and threats to biodiversity by eroding soil and destroying vegetation or animals during explosions. Conflict-related environmental damage coupled with a negative environmental impact of limited slumber of extractive activities supporting the war economy and socio-economic fragility, threaten people's health, livelihoods and security, and eventually weaken any peace efforts. Civilians' lives are disrupted by conflict-related environmental damage, which is currently worse at the climate change crisis taking centerfold. Almost half of the countries which are most vulnerable to climate change are also undergoing armed conflicts, including Afghanistan, Myanmar, Niger, the Philippines, South Sudan, among others. Armed conflict and its consequences notably undermines people's resilience to cope with the climate shocks. Climate change impacts economic and social system negatively and can lead to sudden population displacement. Among some of the most problematic stresses brought upon climate change are the unpredictable and tense management of natural resources within society, increase in gender inequalities, threats to livelihoods, destruction of infrastructure, and in natural resource scarcity. Often, when these stressors are combined, there is an ability to deal with them. This triggers increased levels of poverty, massive population displacement, food insecurity, or starvation and eventually violence and conflicts due to the competition for natural resources and land tenure. As environmental damage and frequent and increased changing weather patterns impact harvest around the world, violent conflicts related to natural resource management and land tenure secure are becoming more visible as a key common challenge now is having enough to eat. In its endeavor to protect the environment in conflict contexts, the international community has developed specific rules within the frameworks of international humanitarian law, also known as the Law of War IHL, International Environmental Law, International Human Rights Law, and International Criminal Law. What do we understand by the environment? International law does not define the term environment. The law applicable in armed conflicts IHL, uses the notion of natural environment to distinguish it from the human environment. Natural environment would comprise foodstuff, agriculture areas, drinking water, livestock, forests and other vegetation as well as fauna, flora and other biological or climatic elements. This includes animals and their living space. As there is no substantial difference between environment and natural environment, for the purposes of today's session we shall use environment. So, what are the main IHL rules protecting the environment in AC? Let's take a look at the rules that either directly or indirectly protect the environment. General protection of the environment First, the environment is protected by the general principles governing the conduct of hostilities. A. Distinction the environment and all its parts are civilian nature and cannot be object of attack, unless some parts of the natural environment have been transformed into military objective. For example, when fighters use vegetation for concealment. Proportionality Environmental damage must be taken into account when assessing the proportionality of an attack against a military objective as incidental damage. If incidental damage is higher than military advantage, attacks must be cancelled. C. Precautionary measures in attacks. Every practicable precaution, both passive and active, should be taken to avoid and, in any case, to minimize any incidental damage to the environment and all its parts. 
This means that fighting forces should avoid using the environment for military purposes. Also, consider that mere presence of fighters in these sites may cause incidental damage. The destruction of any parts of the environment is prohibited, except in case of imperative military necessity. Imperative military necessity requires that there is no other alternative and that destruction is rendered absolutely necessary by the exigency of war. However, imperative military necessity cannot be used to justify destruction of parts of the environment prohibited by other rules of IHL. Professionals involved in the protection of the environment are civilians and protected from attack unless they are directly participating in hostilities. Specific protection of the environment. First, in all military operations, due regards must be paid to the environment. Two, weapons, strategies, and tactics of war intended to cause or which can be expected to cause widespread, long-term, and severe damage to the natural environment are prohibited. Destruction of the natural environment, for example, by burning oil fields, may not be used as a weapon. Now that we have gone through all the main rules, what measures can fighting force adopt to minimize the negative impact on the environment?